Welcome to BioZoom channel, where we explore the microscopic world that keeps us alive and kicking. I'm Sam, a student of molecular biology with an obsession for DNA. And I'm Kate, your curious co-host who's here to ask all the silly questions you might be too shy to ask. Before we dive into today's mind-blowing episode, just a quick reminder, if you're enjoying our deep dives into the world of DNA and genetics, and if you don't want to miss out on how tiny molecules control everything from eye color to curing diseases, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to give us a like. It helps more curious minds find us. Plus, it keeps Kate from asking me if DNA is edible. Hey, I was hungry, okay? Sure. Anyway, let's get started. Did you know that inside every cell in your body, there's a molecular ballet happening right now? It's called the central dogma of molecular biology, and it's rewriting our understanding of life itself. Wow, that's fascinating. But what exactly do you mean by a molecular ballet? Are we talking about tiny dancers in our cells? Not quite dancers, but you are close. We're talking about an intricate choreography of molecules that read, copy, and translate our genetic code. It's like a biological assembly line that's constantly at work, producing the proteins that make us who we are. Oh, I see. So it's more like a factory than a ballet. But how does this process actually work? Well, it all starts with DNA, our genetic blueprint. But here's the thing. DNA is too precious to risk damage, so it stays safely tucked away in the nucleus. Think of DNA as a massive cookbook containing every recipe our cells could ever need. Hmm. So, if DNA is the master cookbook, how do cells actually use these recipes? Great question. This is where transcription comes in. It's like making a copy of just the recipe you need. The cell uses an enzyme called RNA polymerase to read the DNA and create a molecule called messenger RNA, or mRNA for short. Oh, I get it. So mRNA is like a photocopy of a recipe from the master cookbook. But who or what is doing this copying? Exactly. And the copying is done by that enzyme I mentioned, RNA polymerase. It's like a molecular scribe that reads the DNA and writes out the instructions in RNA form. But here's where it gets really interesting. In bacteria, this process happens right out in the open of the cell. Wait, what do you mean, right out in the open? Aren't all cells basically the same? Actually, no. There are two main types of cells. Prokaryotes, like bacteria, and eukaryotes, like the cells in our bodies. Prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, so everything happens in the same space. It's like an open-plan office where everyone can see what's going on. Oh, I see. So in our cells, with a nucleus, it's more like having separate rooms for different tasks? Precisely. In eukaryotes, transcription happens in the nucleus, then the mRNA is processed and sent out to the cytoplasm. It's more organized, but also more complex. Now here's where things get really cool. Once the mRNA is made, it needs to be translated into a protein. Translated? Like from one language to another? That's a great way to think about it. The genetic code is written in the language of nucleotides, A, T, C, and G in DNA, with U replacing T in RNA. But proteins are made of amino acids, so translation is like converting the nucleotide language into the amino acid language. Fascinating. So how does the cell know where to start and stop this translation process? Well, uh, there are specific sequences in the mRNA that signal the start and stop of translation. The start codon is usually AUG, which codes for the amino acid methionine, and there are three stop codons, UAA, UAG, and UGA. Wow, it's like a secret code. But what happens if there's a mistake in this process? You know? Like a typo in the recipe? That's where things can get tricky. Mistakes in the genetic code are called mutations, and they can range from harmless to serious. Some mutations can cause genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia. Oh no, that sounds scary. Is there any way to fix these mistakes? Actually, yes. 
This is where modern science gets really exciting. We now have tools like CRISPR that can actually edit DNA. It's like having a molecular word processor that can find and correct typos in the genetic code. Hold on. We can edit DNA? That sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. I know, right? But it's very real. CRISPR technology is already being used in clinical trials to treat genetic diseases. It's opening up possibilities for treating conditions we once thought were untreatable. That's incredible. But also kind of scary when you think about it. I mean, couldn't this be misused? You're absolutely right to be concerned. The ability to edit genes comes with huge ethical responsibilities. Right now, the focus is on treating serious diseases, but there are ongoing debates about where to draw the line. I can imagine. What are some of the main ethical concerns? Well, one major concern is the potential for unintended consequences. When we edit genes, we might accidentally cause other changes we didn't anticipate. There's also the question of where to draw the line. Should we only use this technology to treat diseases, or is it okay to enhance human traits? Enhance human traits? Like making someone smarter or stronger? Exactly. This idea of designer babies is a hot topic of debate. While it might seem appealing to be able to choose traits for our children, it raises serious ethical questions about equality and what it means to be human. That does sound like a slippery slope. Are there any regulations in place for this kind of research? Yes, there are. Many countries have laws and guidelines governing genetic research and gene editing. For example, in most places, it's illegal to do germline editing. That's editing genes in a way that could be passed down to future generations. But I'm guessing those laws might struggle to keep up with how fast the technology is advancing. You've hit the nail on the head. The technology is advancing so rapidly that lawmakers and ethicists are scrambling to keep up. It's a constant dialogue between scientists, policymakers, and the public to ensure we're using these powerful tools responsibly. It's exciting and a little scary at the same time. What do you think the future holds for this field? The potential is truly staggering. We're looking at the possibility of curing genetic diseases, creating new treatments for cancer, even potentially extending human lifespan. But we're also facing new challenges, like the need to ensure equal access to these technologies and prevent their misuse. Wow, it sounds like we're on the brink of a new era in human history. Do you think we're ready for it? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I think we have the scientific capability to do amazing things, but we need to make sure our ethical frameworks and societal discussions keep pace with the technology. It's going to be a fascinating journey. Well, I, for one, can't wait to see what happens next. This has been absolutely mind-blowing. I'm glad you found it as fascinating as I do. Remember, every cell in your body is performing these incredible feats of molecular engineering right now. It's a reminder of just how amazing and complex life really is. You're right. I'll never look at my cells the same way again. Thanks for this incredible journey through the world of molecular biology. It's been my pleasure. There's always more to learn and discover in this field, so keep that curiosity alive. As we wrap up, let's remember that while we're unlocking the secrets of life at the molecular level, we're also opening up new questions about what it means to be human. The future of genetic engineering is both thrilling and challenging, and it's up to all of us to engage in these important discussions. Absolutely. It's not just about the science, but about how we as a society choose to use this knowledge. I'm excited to see where this journey takes us next. Couldn't agree more. Until next time, keep questioning, stay curious, and remember, the most fascinating discoveries might be happening right inside your own cells.